Okay, well, um, thank you everybody for joining us today. Here at Team Possible, we were looking to address the question, how might we inspire businesses and individuals to be more curious about the value potential of waste? And um, one of the, as we look to ta tackle the biggest glo global crisis uh, that is facing us in the future, climate change and biodiversity loss, we need to create a si significant change in the way that we produce and use products across industries and sectors. And to demonstrate what is possible, we've concentrated our goal uh, on the area of si shifting to a circular economy that can have a big impact and that's in um, the clothing industry. So first of all, I would just like to introduce our team. So we have Aidan McLean from Accelerate Okanagan and a Okanagan College co-op student that's uh, working there. Uh, Davud Haidari from um, Green Step Solutions, Jane Camp uh, Campado from Engage, and myself, Alison Beaumont, um, also from Okanagan College and an a, um, artist. So when we uh, took on that that concept and that how might we, we were really uh, concentrating on, on, on the fact that 8 to 10% of the world's global carbon emissions uh, come from fashion and 20% of wastewater is also produced through that. What we want to do is to create a social enterprise that inspires individuals and businesses in the Okanagan and beyond to change their practices for a better planet. We want to work with community stakeholders to divert plastic waste um, that is ending up in uh, in garbage and to create durable, stylish, sustainable uh, outdoor travel clothing. And we want to have that impact. Um, uh, and by creating this, this opportunity, the money generated would then go back into um, supporting other zero waste businesses as well. And we, we see this as being a, a great way forward for that. Um, so the validation and research, so thank you to Jane for all of these stats, Jane and uh, Davoud for all of these, these stats that we have here. Um, so the market share for fashion is huge. It's, it's grown 8.7% uh, since 2015. Uh, we also know as well that sustainable fashion is um, becoming more and more important um, to, to people. Um, the competition within the industry, there's companies that are well known such as Tentree, Good Tea, Good On You and, and so many more and uh, we feel that having something that is local and connected to the community would be a, a great advantage. So what is the idea? So the idea is that we take plastic uh, recyclables from uh, and working with school districts, businesses, and municipalities, we know that currently what's happening is that that uh, those plastics are being transported all over the province to be actually recycled into materials that then can then can be used or, uh, go further. We know that there is actually a plastic pellet manufacturer down in Penticton. So what we would like to do is to gather in those plastics, you take them to a local manufacturer. That, uh, and then have that spun into fabric, um, create a marketable, uh, durable quality clothing. And then with the profits from that, feed that back into water conservation strategies and then also funding for other zero waste startups. So we're hoping that this process will inspire other um, other startups to, uh, to, join the, um, to, to join the cause. And that really is is the purpose of this is to engage those uh, those folks in uh, in K to twelve system to recycle more and to see how they can be involved in that process. We also had the idea of actually having youth be involved in the design process of the of the um, clothing as well, uh, but really starting to have that that full circle of uh, of circular economy so that we you know we're having that happen within our region. And Aidan put together an amazing video that helps to speak to why this is important. Well, I think that there is a lot of fast fashion that needs to be addressed um, in today's society right now. So having a good sustainable option for clothing um, and like when people are informed can change the world like just a little at a time. Well, I think that recycling bins should stay at schools 
so to keep the garbage with the garbage and the recycling with the recycling. I feel that this would benefit the students, their awareness of the programs, their awareness of empowerment that is potential when we get together and, and think of good ideas of where it is going to. I think that's a great idea because then all of the plastic that's coming from the schools, it gets turned into fabric, which is awesome because you're recycling. So I realize that we've uh, we've we've gone over our area there. So I don't want to take up uh, too much more time. But identifying key milestones and metrics uh, to have uh, a manufacturer identified by 20, uh, January 2022 to generate income uh, in a pilot test in the first year, um, but really to um, to recruit ambassadors and influencers throughout the different generations and really feed back to uh, to the communities. So our ask would be 150K for an investment. Um, this is a huge project um, spanning across the Okanagan and you know a lot of machinery um, is needed for this. So that's why the investment I think is so large. Um, we would hope to have 10 team members on, on our team uh, supporting this uh, project and business. And then we would want to have 15 community connections and resources. So that's really um, the school districts, um, whichever manufacturing plant we go with, um, really all of our partnerships um, that are connected into this business plan is, is what I mean by um, those connections. Uh, okay. Yeah. You go first, Phil. Give you a little swap. Um, I mean, I certainly love it, right? I mean, I think we look at how much clothing is just, um, you know, thrown away essentially on a on a regular basis, right? And, you know, absolutely such a shame. So I think that the for starting a, a clothing brand, I mean, I think the biggest thing of anything is certainly price point, and whether it be price point because you're on the high end and it becomes unaffordable to to take on. Uh, but also the competition that you get on the low end, because I mean, I think we all know the old navies and that of the world are out there and you can buy clothing for extremely cheap. Um, you know, and I think as people's kind of pocketbooks get pressured more and more on a day to day basis, that becomes a bit of a struggle when you look at some of these uh, you know, types of brands and trying to be good to the environment but also you know trying to make it fiscally feasible for a family to be able to outfit themselves that way so i mean i, I certainly love the idea um it, i think there's just some cognizant pieces here for the consumer side of things to make it a viable option for them so yeah and i totally agree with matt uh, i always love the reference to circular economy it just it just all makes sense right we are in a closed system that we have to manage and not everybody recognizes that um, I love the idea that you mentioned, you know, your competition being a partner. Um, I think, you know, you're all sharing the objective. I mean, you have to be physically sustainable um, and, and make, a, make a go of it. But at the same time, you're trying to move toward the same goal. And that's done collectively. Uh, you know, the idea of trying to gain awareness and education, that is how you affect change. Um, and that's such an important part of, of what you do uh, to change culture. And people need to want to do this. Uh, there has to be an expectation that you do this. And, you know, doing things, you know, like the pellets you were talking about, I know with the, the big mass of plastic in the Pacific Ocean um, and, the, and what they were doing there, they were taking that back, taking those plastic pellets and creating sunglasses strictly as promotion. So anyway, really, uh, really great pitch, guys. Thanks for your effort.